I have been absolutely addicted to creating a character that not only is fun to play for a variety of reasons, but also fits a going theme. That meaning class, race, specialization, transmog, just the whole hit feeling like something. And I feel like the last piece of the puzzle there is Realm. There's a lot of really cool Realm names out there that really inspire creativity. When was the last time you guys looked at your Realm list? Man, there's a lot of really interesting names for Realms. So it's to the point where this kind of got inspired when me and Cop were doing some of the immersive playthroughs we were doing I was like let's just make these characters on realms that fit the theme so we made our blood elf one on Windrunner and the name has stuck ever since I've absolutely loved it and today we're gonna be taking a look at some of my favorite realms out there for this concept. Top 10, we're gonna show what I think are some of the coolest realms out there that you could make a character on and just feel like it's a part of the story. It's not just the character, the spec, the transmog, but it's also the realm. When other people see you and you look a certain way and they see your realm attached to your name, it's really gonna mean something to them. So let's get right to it. Before we even start the countdown, we have to give honorable mention to this realm. This is a really funny thing. You, I'm, you're looking through the list and you're like, huh, okay, uh, uh, Trollbane, you, you recognize a lot of these. Then you see Urson and you're like, Urson, that's an interesting name. What's that a reference to? And then you Google it, you realize the answer is nothing. What? So you, you look even on here, if you haven't uh, been to Wowpedia, every realm has like a little thing about, you know, it's old, old progress and all this stuff. And then it says here, the name Urson comes from, well, we aren't quite sure. Urson is a server name that could be a misspelling by Blizzard of Ursul, the Bear Guard, or Ursine, the language of the Furbolgs. So the only thing I could think of is that there was meant to be lore and, uh, you know, the Furbolgs were meant to be Urson, like a, maybe like an overarching branch of a race. But yeah, it doesn't exist. How great is that? Number 10 on this list is going to be Eldrathalos, also known as Dire Maul. It's one of the most iconic places in World of Warcraft, especially in the early years, at least in my opinion. There's a lot going on here that really subtly echoes thousands and thousands of years of history in this universe that never really gets explained. And it was one of the first places that made me really want to delve into the story further. Playing on this realm today would be absolutely perfect for any Night Elf character, but I'd really love to echo the concept of the Highborn, which is actually a leveling challenge I just completed where I played a Night Elf Arcane Mage, which is something formerly not even possible. Prior to Cataclysm, they were still exiled or outside the graces of the Alliance. And at one point, this character here was actually looking, knocking on the door in Teldrassil, trying to get himself in the good graces of Tyrand and the rest of the Night Elves. And then in Cataclysm, they ultimately allowed them in. So Archmage, Morden, Evenshade. This is a transmog which you can absolutely copy and come very close to. And I really love the concept of it. Like a, a male or a female Night Elf Mage looks really good to me. And I guess there's almost something a little bit interesting about just the fact that they were not really like allowed in for a long time. Uh, like it was like something that I remember talking about in Cataclysm where people were like, there's no way they shouldn't be allowed in all that stuff. So it's very interesting. Now, if you're playing, uh, if you want to play something else that's not a Night Elf, you could potentially try to become a Night Elf with this item here. This is actually a toy. It's got a 15 minute cooldown and a 30 minute duration. So it's actually possible to play as the character that looks like this entirely, like 100%. I think it might go away if you die, but regardless, there's some really cool uh, potential here because this is not only a night elf female, but it's also a ghostly night elf. And there's ways to make it even more ghostly, but it does, it, it's actually opaque. You could see through the character model. So it really feels appropriate. And I feel like if you saw this and you had like a very thematic name, uh, and then you saw the realm Eldrith the Lost next to it, somebody would, their heads would turn. But on top of that, there's also some really cool art out there of people who are trying to suggest that they should actually make Dire Maul the new Night Elf capital. Uh, you know how it got burned down or whatever in Battle for Azeroth. They don't really have a home right now. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if Shadowlands did explore something like this. So this is actually the Shendralar Tabard, which not actually something you could obtain in the game, but the signal is everywhere in Dire Maul. And I'd love to see that elsewhere. So these are some really cool pieces of art that I think would be absolutely awesome to be able to, you know, realize. And Dire Maul is such a cool place. I love one of the, the coolest things about it is that like it feels like it's in the jungle or in the forest of Feralus. It feels very primal, very in tune with nature. 
And uh, I personally, I could see myself filling the entire realm with just night elf, night elf mages, maybe priests, just things like maybe even warriors. You might even try to copy the transmog of Prince Toraldrin, who is actually still the final boss of Dyramal West, but I don't think much of this gear is actually in the game, and uh, certainly the transmog for the weapon is not available, but it is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, there's some really cool stuff going on in Dire Mall. Anyway, even to this day, you could still uh, have a, a fair portion of the Rep Paladin hidden uh, transmog for the uh, Ashbringer sword takes place in Dire Mall there. So it's just always been someplace I've loved ever since Classic. And I could see myself really spending a lot of time on a realm with Night Elves involved. For me, number nine on the list is going to be Dragon Maw. Dragon Maw clan are pretty famous in WoW, and there's a lot to go over if you want to summarize all their lore, but I love the concept of the clan itself because of its association with the Red Dragon Flight. I'm not the biggest lore guy, but I absolutely love dragons and what they've represented in the game. So if I ever played in this realm, it would be very easy for me. I would be playing an orc that was riding a red dragon, or maybe even a black dragon of some sort. But just getting that feel that they were actually orcs controlling dragons is so interesting to me. It's quite primal too. I really love orcs, and I really love some of the transmogs that I've seen out there. There's no shortage of good ones as well. Here is a really cool orc warrior looking transmog using a lot of different sets from a lot of different time frames here's a interesting priest that might be looking like a dragon maw here is another uh, relatively interesting concept i really like the use of the tabard here and that belt that has like the dagger and a couple of things strapped to the belt. But this is the one that absolutely made me fell in love. And if you haven't seen this yet, it's really, really good. This is actually a playable character, okay? And it's, you know, a blacksmith looking thing, which is cool, also using the belt. But the main thing here is that you can actually make your character look like this. This is a new customization in Shadowlands 9.0 pre-patch and that red eye look there is absolutely something that you got to take a look at but it's so cool to see it in game so let's take a look so this is your standard Maghar orc it's an option the skin color you know you can do the brown the black there's all different colors things that make you look like different Maghar tribes but these ones are meant to be uh, obviously way more noticeable and then you have this one which is just your kind of you know standard it's like almost like a gray skinned orc and uh, it's it's fine on its own you know this character looks you know like nothing special but then new eye colors get added in 9.0 and we have these two at the top here and they are very noticeable so you have two different options i'm not sure which one i like better this one looks like you can see the pupil a little bit more and this one looks like far more aggressive so i think both look great it depends on which you prefer um, I definitely think the bald hunched orc with the full beard looks very good. I kind of wish that the braids didn't exist because it definitely feels like something that uh, is probably more uh, toted for the actual uh, regular Maghar orc. Yeah, I think the fact that, you know, they, they all they needed to do was add this eye collar and you basically have a Dragon Maw orc. And that is what this guy is uh, after. And I think it looks awesome. So this is something, like I said, I could easily see myself playing this way and uh, simply uh, riding a dragon. And my god, I could fill a whole server list with just characters. And and the cool thing is it doesn't even have to be, you know, like the Dragon Maw orcs have all different kinds of orcs associated with them. It doesn't have to just be warriors or rogues. It could be hunters, could be mages, could be anything that you could play as an orc. And I think it would fit the theme so well. My number eight is gonna be Airy Peak. And there's also the Wild Hammer reference realm but i like airy peak better it just got a nicer name to it and airy peak is a very interesting place in world of warcraft and uh, people have been doing wild hammer dwarf transmogs for a long time you know before wild hammer stuff got added and and look how cool this looks and this is something that you could really lean into now uh, i say that uh, that would maybe the best actual customization that got added with shadowlands is how unique you could make your dwarf look now and especially with the new options for female as well one of my favorite things to do is just hit the randomize button until we get something crazy and this this was like literally what i got when i <laughs> clicked on the dwarf thing so but there is so many cool options with the new tattoos especially if if you're really going for a warrior there's some you know female dwarf animations are quite nice it might just be me but i love that whole like full upper body encasement in tattoos there and how it's it's so well drawn on the skull there on the scalp it almost makes me want to just play a bald character for that especially because it matches so well 
the white and blue feathers it's just so unique and uh, i feel like if you saw this on the airy peak realm you would really recognize the character Number seven on this list is gonna be Scenarian Circle. Aptly an RP realm, and this is a realm that I could see myself spending a lot of time on. I really love the concept of the Scenarian Circle. Everything they've embodied, there's a lot of really good lore, Stag Helm and all that stuff there. So the Night Elves obviously are a pervasive force in the Scenarian Circle, but it's not just Night Elf stuff that really keeps me interesting. Obviously they have a lot of really good transmogs that just look simply spectacular for a night elf druid and uh, both male and female work really well here but there's some really good looks for both male and female torn as well and i think uh, torn fits in just as well so i could see myself having a lot of druids overall in this realm or maybe even just some uh, torn and night elf characters that aren't druids but are pretending to be a part of it you know you could even try to get uh scenarian circle themed items there's been a lot of items in the game that have been sold and they look like items that might come from them. So, you know, you could probably embrace the transmog that way or simply just go right for Druid. I think the Druid challenge mode set is probably one of the most iconic looking item sets in the entire game. If you have it, obviously, if you didn't play Mob, you probably don't have it, but it is so good looking. And I, every time I play a Druid, especially a Torn Druid, I always transmog this. And I always thought this would look so good on a Scenarian Circle style NPC, just kind of hanging out in the camp, just feeling like I was part of the Druidic cycle, trying to help and do anything that my Druid could to improve the life on Azeroth. Next up on the list, number six overall is Duskwood. Now this is another great realm. There was always one thing that struck me about Duskwood. There was a lot of skeletons, a lot of graveyards, a lot of things that were kind of a little spooky. So I always had this thing in my head that imagine if there was just like undead, like actual players playing undead, hanging out in Duskwood all the time too. I always thought that those skeletons, you know, could actually be players. Like imagine if there was a way that, you know, even like using like the Nogginfogger elixir, like, and then going in and like hiding in the crypts. So imagine some dudes questing through Duskwood on his, you know, low level character. And he comes and you're in there as the Noggin Fogger Elixir, you're looking like a skeleton, and he doesn't know anything about the game. He can't tell that you're a player. He he goes to attack you and you just destroy him. How cool would that be? I love the concept. It doesn't even have to be a skeleton though. You could just be an actual undead or even just a dude with a ghoul, like a death knight or something like that. But I think the main thing I would want to do in this realm is fill it with humans wearing night watch type transmog. So this is, I think, more inspired by Game of Thrones Night's Watch. It's it's difficult to tell. They're very similar. Uh, the names are very similar. So, uh, but yeah, just kind of like a lot of blacks and uh, looking like a little grizzled, right? Um, there's some other good ones too. I've seen this one as well. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of just dark plate, a little bit more modern look, uh, but I love the belt. Like we said, I love that belt. But this is kind of the uh, real, what I see when I see the Night Watch. And uh, this guy's wearing a, a very famous weapon, the Vanquisher Sword. Item is not in the game anymore, but there's a transmog very, very similar to it. So you can still obtain it. I don't think any of this gear is in the game. Uh, if it is, it probably, well, it's definitely not plate. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure if any of this is actually in the game. But there's one very specific element of this character that makes me very interested and it is this, he's got a torch, okay? So if you watched my Duskwood playthrough, which I uploaded only about a few months ago, uh, I used the torch as well. And I think that is so quintessential about Duskwood. Like, I, and I could see myself just playing characters that were using torches. Uh, it doesn't really cast a lot of light. They don't really do much uh, in terms of the game, even with Inky Black on. Yeah, realistically, I don't even care. Just give my character a feel like I need a torch while I'm in that zone uh, and I could see myself doing that. And this is one of the first ones where I would say that I would couple the realm with a guild to make a guild called the Night Watch or Night Watch or whatever. I think it's called just Night Watch. That would be, yeah. So imagine being on the realm Duskwood with the guild Night Watch dressed like this with a torch in your offhand and a sword like that in your main hand and you run into somebody from another realm and they see you and they're like, wow, that dude's, that dude's serious about Duskwood, isn't he? Number five on the list is Kirin Tor. It's a very unique name, a name that really resonates in WoW. You see it, you immediately know that it's something special. And Dalaran in general has always been fascinating to me. I've always loved it ever since Warcraft 3. There's a lot of really cool transmog options to explore that concept as well. But the Kirin Tor 
niche in terms of visibility is one that has a lot of options. There's a lot of different tabards as well. This is the uh, Wrath version, the Kirin Tor Wrath rep. And then there's another one that comes in Mop, which is for the uh, Isle of Thunder. And this is like a white and purple one. This is a little bit more deeper purple. This is a little bit more washed out. It's got the iconic eye, a little bit yellow as well. So this is like purple and white. So either one of these are options. This is obviously Alliance only. If I was to play on this realm, I would probably be mostly human mages. I feel like that's um, you know a big part of it. But now with the uh, new high elf customization options for both void elf and blood elf, I could see myself playing a lot of elves too. So we could always use some horde only options in there as well. Uh, you might see a lot of different uh, Kieran Tor style transmogs that look similar to this. There's people who've done like whole sets like this, you know. Uh, an Archmage style uh, battle mage with like the Cataclysm transmog. And then there's even non mages. I mean, you could easily play non mages as well. This one's really good because this uses the uh, the bonnet that we were uh, talking about a while ago. Really cool transmog piece for that. And that's like a paladin. Uh, and this might be a warrior or something like that. And, uh, you know, I showed this too, like a paladin set. Uh, it doesn't really, uh, I don't feel like it really fits the theme. And obviously, if you're in Dalaran looking like this, People are probably going to notice. That's probably the best thing about it uh, is Dalaran's still a pretty common city to be uh, to see people in, either the Wrath one or the uh, Legion one. So you got a lot of options. You definitely could end up seeing a lot of the Legion order hall. Um, certainly takes place and and is high level stuff with Kieran Tor and the uh, the council that rules that and everything like that. So really have uh, yeah a lot of different options. Now, number four on my list is Gurubashi. And if you know me, you might be surprised this isn't higher. I absolutely love Zulgarub as a raid. I think it's one of the coolest places that has ever existed. It's got some amazing lore implications to that. Go all the way back thousands of years and go all the way to the future. Like Shadowlands has Hakar as a boss. Gurubashi is such a unique name. When you see that name, you immediately know. And I feel like this would be the quintessential, like this is the perfect realm to actually have troll characters on. Whether it's Zandalari Troll or just regular Troll, I absolutely think I could park dozens of different Troll characters on this realm. And this would be another great realm to have different guilds kind of segregating what type of Troll you are as well. The coolest thing about this is there's no shortage of transmog that would fit. I mean, look at this guy. This guy made a whole transmog out of gear that really just doesn't even match. And it does look like a Troll transmog, right? Even though he's playing an Orc. There's so many different troll items out there, so many different troll themes that you could follow. You can literally do anything. All you gotta do is have it on a troll and slap on a raptor mount, and that, that would be enough. I mean, there's also so there's four different mounts that you could have obtained from the old and new ZGs. So just riding those things around on different characters would be awesome in its own right. But if you go to any of these pages, you will see dozens of items like this. A Venom Priest, High Priestess Venoxus, Gurubashi Venom Priest, Troll Rogue, all with different themes and different color schemes. Uh, it's really like, it's actually staggering how many good troll transmogs there are. You could make a lot of different characters, uh, you know, and Bloodlord Manicure too. Uh, you know, very famous boss. You could pretty much make, I know, I know he's not wearing this in classic, but yeah, you could pretty much make his whole transmog. And that's one of the coolest things about these characters is that they're wearing gear that is actually just in the game. Like you could make High Priest Phenoxus, right? You could easily do that. You could do most of these without any issue at all. So I was thinking it'd be really cool to have like a uh, guild like Disciples of Marley and, uh, you know, make it like you're a hunter with a spider pet or something like that. And then you could have, you know, the call and all these different like beast related characters. Maybe this is a druid. You could this a panther. You could do whatever uh, you want with all of these different characters. And you could make all of these transmogs. Like these are all transmogs that are just in the game. It's just three items effectively. So I think this would be really, really, really cool to make a character that models each of these bosses. There's just so much cool potential here. But then you could take one step further and make a, an enemy of the Gurubashi in the Zandalari. You can make all kinds of Zandalari trolls because they were actually there too, right? Like they're a huge part, the Zandalari tribe of uh, Zulgarup and of the Gurubashi in general. There's a lot that you could do on this realm. And I think it would just be so cool to just be like, you know, have a ton of different trolls. And when you see somebody ride by on like, especially, oh my God, I don't have it. But especially if you had the ZG Tiger, if you had that thing and you rode by with like a guild, like a special guild name and a great transmog on a troll on that mount and somebody sees you on the realm Gurubashi, they're going to be like, huh, 
Yeah, all right, number three on the list is the old AD there. I have one true regret in WoW, and is that I no longer have this tabard. So I played on a different account in TBC and Wrath that I no longer have access to. The Ardent Dawn in general is like, I love it. I love Paladins, as you know. I love uh, all the situation with Arthas and Lordaeron and, you know, the humans fallout, basically, of the Scourge and everything like that. It's honestly insanely compelling to me uh, so you'll you won't be surprised by the top three then after hearing that but i love it and, and there's again no shortage of good transmogs for it let's take a look at some of these so so this is very basic okay you're gonna see them all pretty much using the transmog tabard but i'm gonna tell you something about uh what i plan on doing so anyway um yeah you can make you know a lot of different options there's so many you know decent looking old cloth uh maybe plate maybe leather transmogs that you could build around this um, I, I think this is probably, this would probably be my number one. I really like the Paladin uh, Tier 7 this is. It's not the Tier 3 either. So you can go and obtain this. I love the dark theme. I think it fits uh, the concept really well. It's quite different color scheme than the actual tabard. Like if the gear was that deep black, then it would look even better. But yeah, this is awesome. I really like this one. And again, you know, you type this in and there is no shortage at all. There's so many different options. Uh, you know, this could be a priest. Looks like True Faith Vestments. Uh, here's another priest, um, kind of like a more like high priest look. Uh, and then of course you have uh, Paletris, which is technically uh, NPC for the Arden Crusade, but you know, I would probably lump all of that in anything that seems relevant to this. You know, I just love Tyrion Forging and I love everything that comes with it. Um, you know, all the, there's all different classes involved as well, which is really cool. Like there's warriors, there's priests, uh, you could make it work in a variety of ways. So my plan uh, in order to uh, make this work, I think it's probably best to show you in game. Let's take a look. So the easiest solution that I have found for this is simply make a guild tabard uh, that uses the same color scheme. And it's really not as crazy as it sounds. The, the main color theme for me is black, white, and gold. And that's very easily replicated here. The problem is you're not going to get a perfect uh, a perfect mix here, but I think the icons that are available for the tabard are really fitting too. I think this works well. You can do like a black background. Uh, there's not really a true black, unfortunately. Uh, frankly, the grays are the ones that look the best, or even the white. You could even do a white with maybe a black symbol instead. Uh, I do think that there's plenty of good options here, so that's probably what I would do. I'd probably just make a guild called Arden Dawn or maybe even Arden Crusade or something like that on a realm like this and use the transmog on all my characters. If there's ever a way to obtain this tabard again, I want to pull out all the stops to try to get it. It's probably, like I said, it's my one true regret not having this tabard. Honestly, the uh, the dawn, the icon, the sun there is cool, but I do think there's plenty of good icon. Like, you know, this, this icon is, here is pretty good. Kind of looks like a sun. But yeah, obviously, you know, the situation with Tyrion, the situation with uh, his son and, and Darian Morgrain and, you know, Alexandros Morgrain and everything that goes into that storyline there with the Arden Dawn and then eventually the Arden Crusade. I simply cannot get enough of it. Like, I cannot lie to you. The stories there and the history there is just so strong. That's a really good one for me. And the next two aren't far off. Even though my main is the Blood Death Knight. I really love Paladins. Paladins are my number one class ever, and they probably always will be because it doesn't just, it's not just about WoW. It dates back to something so much further, and that's why number two on this list is going to be the Silver Hand. I absolutely, I'll tell you, that I have 20 characters on Silver Hand, but it is my original realm. It is the realm I started on. Uh, I actually quite enjoy being there because of the name. Honestly, the name has, this is really the inspiration for this whole video is Silver Hand, uh, and I picked that realm because I'm like, yo, the Silver Hand from Warcraft 3, I recognize that as probably my favorite, you know, my favorite thing in Warcraft 3. I'm not a big lore guy, okay? So for you to hear me say these words, it should really resonate with you, okay? I have read like every inch and everything out there about the Silver Hand. I love the formation of it. I love the concept of it. I love how it, you know, falls apart. I love what it becomes. I love what it becomes in the later days in Legion. So I could see myself filling an entire account with Paladins on this realm. I, I already have like probably 15, uh, maybe not that. I, I have at least 10 Paladins on my main account. A couple of them are on Silver Hand, ironically. Uh, but yeah, I could easily see myself filling an entire account on Silver Hand with Paladins. Like, And another reason to love the Silver Hand is absolutely represented in the game. Another one of these things that if you go type this in, you are going to find a lot of of silver hand related stuff here you know what i mean it's not like some of these other realms where it's like ah you gotta kind of make an obscure transmog and kind of try to support it yourself but it's like there's a whole tabard involving one of the most important characters ever 
and his storyline. Then there's these new items that are coming. Like this is in Shadowlands. I, I've not yet obtained it, but this is an item that's in Shadowlands. Okay, a sword that um, seemingly has something to do with Uther, perhaps. I'm not sure exactly why it's in the game. And then of course there's these items which were added in Legion. Uh, which are, this is like the, the yellow one, uh, it's like a replica of uh, Uther's mace. Uh, so that's crazy. And then like the shield, there's a gold and a white one. And it's like, God, they actually have the, the logo on it. The coolest thing about Silverhand, the Order Hall. The Order Hall is actually like so legit. It's unbelievable. I was so blessed to be playing a Paladin. The Order Hall and the class campaign are just absolutely spectacular. And I'm telling you what, if you want to play through a character, fresh character go make a paladin go get the ashbringer the ashbringer alone having the ashbringer on with this transmog and there's like the blue ashbringer this stuff just fits so well like it's fully supported in the game it's not something where you're you know you're piecing it together to look like all you need is that transmog that tabard and it's like wow that's a silver hand <laughs> that dude's a silver hand member so it's pretty freaking cool i love the concept i have a lot of characters on that realm and uh, it's always held a special spot for me so that's that's number two on the list. So can you imagine, can you imagine what number one might be? So as much as I like the Orn Dawn, Silver Hand, Paladins in general, I have an almost twisted obsession with the Scarlet Crusade. They have followed us from classic through many expansions and they still find a way to be relevant in WoW here and there. And it's kind of funny actually how many uh, different branches and different elements we've seen from the Scarlet Crusade. And I could say with confidence, this is the realm that I would play on if I wanted to just fill a 50 character account with different Scarlet Crusaders. And the cool thing about that is they have now opened their ranks to undead. <laughs> it doesn't really make a ton of sense, but you know, it's interesting. So you can play both Horde and Alliance. I also would say that Blood Elves could easily fit in. In fact, I have many characters uh, with that theme, which I'll show you soon. But uh, let's take a look at th This is all you need to see. I'm not going to show you, you know, different links and talk about all this stuff. You only need to see this. This is it. Okay. There's a whole Wowhead page that is about joining the Scarlet Crusade. Okay. This person says, uh, Scarlet Crusaders are WoW's versions of the cool kid. I'm sure we'd all defect from the stupid horde and dumb alliance to join up. Unfortunately, since we can't do that, we'll have to make do with pretending. And that is what we're doing today. So... Uh, yeah, lots of options for transmog and lots of uh, really cool. Uh, th this article got has everything. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say right now, cloth and plate are certainly the best options. Uh, there's a lot of really cool cloth options. You can do one of each armor specialization easily. Okay, uh, there's a lot of different uh, options in the NPC world out there. Transmog wise, it might not be the easiest thing to replicate, but. Uh, yeah, you can do it. So, yeah, this article, look it up. Scarlet Crusade Transmog Guide Wowhead. It's awesome. It shows, like, you know, these are very detailed, too. It shows you exactly what it's going to look like. It shows you every single item. And this is quite old, too. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some new options, okay? One of the options that's not on here is the new Scarlet Crusade Ensemble, which you can actually buy from the Dark Moon Fair. And it's got a male version and a plate version. The leather is interesting. You know, you could try to make yourself look like some of these things. It's not gonna really work out a lot of these items, but this was also made before you could wear no shoulders and stuff like that. So a lot of this is a lot easier than it looks. Then the plate set is great. So I wanna show you uh, some of what I got for this right now. Like, so here's the actual, the male lookalike, but it's for plates. This is a Paladin. I'm leveling a no spec paladin and I think this looks great on it. You know, the colors are a little off. Um, they don't like the red from the pants doesn't match the rest of the set really. Uh, but I think it looks very appropriate on a blood elf, honestly. Like I don't find like it looks bad at all. Um, and it's really cool because it's basically like a super low fantasy transmog. Like it's actually male and I'm a plate class. So that's pretty cool. I love this shield. I think this looks really good. Um, I think it goes really well with the, the style, especially, you know, with the Lordaeron logo there. That just seems really appropriate. But then I also have this warrior here that I've had for a while, trying to look like uh, Scarlet Commander Morgrain, which is, you know, again, a famous character for a variety of reasons. But this is a famous character, okay? You really need to look into this dude. If you don't know who this dude is, this is not just some random ass character. I would say that the Scarlet Crusade from in-game perspective is awesome. From a transmog perspective is spectacular. And from a lore perspective, it's frankly second to none. I, the, the stuff that goes on and has gone on over the years, it's just like, oh my God, this is like insanely well-written. Uh, and uh, it has 
you know, a legacy from Warcraft 3, stretching all the way through Classic and in, you know, even even now. I'm, I'm sure there's, like, in fact, there is. There's Shadowlands has, uh, like, actual NPCs from the Scarlet Crusade in Shadowlands. Blizzard, it's their love letter, you know what I mean? They've they've told the story a million times and they're going to keep telling it. It's very good. I, I will say that I'm very satisfied. Um, every time I make a transmog that looks even remotely similar to anything on this list, I'm always like, man, this, this, this article is really well done. So easily, easily the character and the theme, uh, the process that I identify the most with. And you could play literally every class. I mean, I, I would maybe maybe like not druid or shaman or something like that, but I, I could talk all day about this. So that's it. So let me know what you guys think. I hope that you uh, don't find this like weird or anything like this. You know, I, I love playing WoW in a lot of different ways. And uh, I think it's very easy to enjoy WoW no matter what's going on in the game when you find yourself in, in this mindset. Like when you're thinking about and embracing different elements of WoW and not just you know, playing it to uh, be like a competitive raider or, you know, you pretend like you're doing, you know, better than you are and all this stuff. Like there's there's time and place for improvement and competition. And I am I embark on that journey very often. But there's also time for just relaxing and being a part of the universe and having fun. And that's something that I've really grown fond of over the years. So thank you for watching. We will see you in the next one.